friends. Uh, welcome back to another WSIB Truth Matters with uh, Joe Machado. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Uh, well, anyway, by the time I post this, it'll be uh, late evening. Um, but yeah, another beautiful uh, spring day. Um, so uh, today I'm going to cover the matter of um, loss of earnings benefits that fall under Bill 99. Uh, for claims uh, from January 1st, 1998 to uh, present. Um, there are three key elements about um, loss of earnings benefits. First is um, what constitutes loss of earnings benefits? When do they get paid? Um, the other part is um, calculation. So the short-term er earnings calculation um, the other part is the long-term earnings calculation. Um, and so how long these benefits get paid for. So today I want to keep things simple and the video uh, short. So you're not overwhelmed with all this information. Uh, so today I'm going to cover uh, loss of earnings uh, entitlement and the short-term earnings calculation. And then in tomorrow's video, that'll be Monday, the 17th of April, I'm going to cover the um, long-term earnings calculation. And uh, that way, I think we'll keep things a little bit more simple. Um, I'm going to post policies on uh, the links to policies on the screen as well. And I'm going to go through um, the more simplified um, manner of how these benefits are calculated. But if you have any questions, um, you can review the policy. Um, actually don't review the policy because you're going to be more confused. Just email me directly with any questions you have um, and I'll be able to get back to you and give you the specific information that you need. So I want to make sure that you have all you need so that you're not confused about how these benefits are calculated. And the WSIB doesn't really do a good job of getting all that information out. Uh, they do little bits and pieces and uh, I find that doesn't work very well. So anyway, we'll get right into it. So uh, loss of earnings benefits are paid for, again, claims from January 1, 1998 to, to present. Uh, they're paid every two weeks. Uh, they're paid, uh, they can be paid um, for 72 months or more. Uh, the board does review them once a year. And uh, once they reach the 72 month lock-in review date, um, in most cases, they get locked in until 65. Um, the uh, benefit can also be taken as a lump sum. So if, if your loss of earnings uh, benefits are calculated and they work out to uh, 25% or sorry, 10% of your um, full benefits, uh, you can have, you can opt to have that paid out as a lump sum. Uh, which is which is a good thing. The um, after the sixth um, year, the WSIB can review your benefits, uh, your loss of earnings benefits, uh, if you're participating in any return to work activities, uh, or if you haven't uh, completed uh, medical uh, rehabilitation program or healthcare services um, during that. Uh, six-year period, so if you're still receiving treatment, uh, or if there's been a significant deterioration in your condition after the six years, uh, which obviously needs to be supported by medical. Um, and also, and this one is very important, um, if you haven't reported any significant changes to your condition um, before those six years. Um, so, after that as well, the WSIB will take um, or adjust that benefit uh, based on um, inflation. So that annual percentage that they uh, normally use to increase uh, benefits. Um, significant changes that you need to report, it's very important, is uh, your return to work status. So uh, if you weren't working for a period of time uh, and then you uh, started a new job um, and it pays higher earnings. Uh, it's important to report that so that they can review and determine whether or not a recalculation is, is needed. Uh, 
if there's a change to your medical condition, um, so if there's been a, an improvement in your medic, uh, medical condition, or if there's been a deterioration in your medical condition, uh, you should always report these to the WSIB. Um, those changes should be ha should take place within 10 days of, uh, of happening. And I always recommend that any changes that you report, um, a lot of people will just make a phone call. The best way to do it is to send them a, a letter. Uh, you can upload it directly to the um, WSIB. Uh, if you're a member of, of my uh, company, WSIBSettlements.com, uh, we have uh, templates there that you can use and also you can upload it directly from um, our, uh, our member center uh, where you can upload anything you want, documents, um, images, reports um, uh, through that as well. So yeah, within 10 days, if there's any changes to your income or your medical condition, uh, report it. If uh, you return to work, um, I mentioned that one. Um, if you're receiving any other income from other sources, so if you uh, become entitled to Canada Pension Disability, uh, it's important to report that as well because the WSIB uh, has the uh, right to offset that from benefits that they're paying you. Um, so that is also a crucial one that you should report. Um, if uh, you, fa you fail to report, they find out about it, then that can result, excuse me, that can result in uh, your benefits being stopped um, or reduced or taken away. Um, and also failure to report can re result in legal charges and if you're found guilty, um, they can involve jail in a, up to a $25,000 fine. So I'm not trying to scare you, but uh, it's important to report these things. I've had my legal battles with the WSIB, and I know once they have their hooks into you, uh, it can make your uh, life miserable and turn your life upside down. So always err in the sight of caution, uh, even if you don't think it's something important. Report it. It's, it's, it's important. So um, now we're going to get into the actual short-term earnings um, calculation and what's used in that calculation. And I'm going um, to read somewhat through the policy so that I'm giving you the exact information. And I'm also going to put up a link with the actual policy so that you can um, check it out if you decide that you'd like to do that. Um, and if there's anything in the policy that you're not sure about, or that whether or not it may apply to you, uh, as I said before, send me an email and I'll be able to clarify it for you. Um, and my email will be in the description as well. So your um, your earnings for the first 12 weeks are calculated based on your earnings from your employment, uh, as well as all other employment uh, at the time of your injury. And it's paid for the first 12 weeks so your first 12 weeks of loss of earnings benefits, that means that you haven't returned to work, you're uh, either receiving medical treatment or you're in uh, return to work activities um, and you're receiving loss of earnings benefits. Uh, those are paid for the first 12 weeks and it's based on uh, earnings from your employer and other employment uh, around that uh, time. Um, so what does that include? It includes your hourly, daily, or your weekly rate, that they consider that your base pay, um, uh, that you were, having, you were getting from your employer at the time of your injury. Um, if you worked in an environment, in a restaurant, for example, or in a tourist industry, where you uh, receive gratuities or tips, 25% um, of um, the uh, gross earnings, um, you don't have to provide uh, proof of that if those earnings are 25% or less of what your gross earnings are. Uh, if it's 25% or more than your gross earnings, then you have to provide proof of, of, um, um, of, what, that, of what they are. Um, also, if you're in a unionizing environment, uh, shift differentials or shift premium, um, there's a weekly average of your rate. Um, that's paid at least once in the four weeks prior to your injury. Um, if your shift rotation is longer than the four weeks, uh, then one full shift cycle, and that's what they would use to uh, 
calculate. Uh, if you receive uh, vacation pay as part of your um, regular weekly uh, regular weekly salary or earnings from your employment, um, and it's paid with every check, that's also uh, included in the short-term er earnings. Uh, if you're required to do mandatory overtime, so there's a contractual agreement uh, with your employer between your either your union or um, just your own contractual agreement, um, then yes, they would also uh, include that. If you do regular overtime, uh, that's also included. Uh, if you receive regular production bonuses or commissions, so in other words, if you work in, a, in an environment where you're doing piecework or sales and you get regular commissions based on those sales, you, that's also included. Um, if you receive room and board in lieu of pay or as part of your pay, um, I've seen this in the construction industry where sometimes you're traveling to another city and you stay there for three or four or five weeks or if you're in the mining industry. Uh, those are just some of the... Um, things that I've seen, or if you're in sales and you're traveling uh, as well and you stay in, in certain areas. So um, that would also be uh, um, considered. Um, if you are involved in concurrent employment, so if you have two jobs at the same time, um, then yes, that's also considered in the uh, short-term earnings calculation. Um, and I'm also going to post uh, um, on the screen here a list of items that um, the table that um, you can see if there's a check mark, um, uh, yes or no on either side uh, of what's included in short term earning and what's not included in the uh, um, or what's included in short term earning and what's included in long term earning. Uh, I'm going to cover the long-term earning portion tomorrow, but this will give you a pretty good idea of what's included in both. So that pretty much uh, covers the uh, basics of um, loss of earnings benefits. It's, it's really not that complicated. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and basically just paying attention to some of these guidelines that I uh, spoke about. Um, and uh, look at the chart. Uh, and if you want to have a look at the policy uh, or something comes to mind based on what I just uh, discussed with you, uh, send me an email. I want to make sure that you're very well equipped and that you're knowledgeable as to what is involved in the calculations so that you're not missing out. Uh, because I've seen this happen a lot um, where the board goes ahead and does calculations and makes assumptions and then you end up with the calculation that was too high and then they create an overpayment you have to pay money back where the calculation that wasn't uh, sufficient or representative of your actual earnings profile and you're not really getting paid as much as you should be so that's that's very important uh, as i said before i'm going to cover the uh, long-term earnings calculation tomorrow uh, that should be about a 10 to 12 minute video as well um, and uh, that's about it. So I'm going to let you get back to your Sunday evening. Hopefully I can get this posted uh, relatively early. I'm going to try and get it done for 7, 8 o'clock. Um, now, I wanted to leave you with this thought. And um, I'm sure you've probably thought about this at one point or another. I know I have, especially in the last four or five years. Um, and, and the thought is, you know, if you look at what's going on with the WSIB today and, um, you know, what they're doing in terms of, their very clear show of favoritism to the employer community by giving them these rebates and, and giving them back $1.5 billion of money that really should have gone to you and your families. Um, and, and you start to see that and, and, and people, uh, injured workers are struggling to get their loss of earnings benefits, to get their health care paid for, uh, basically having to beg and plead for every little bit that they get. Um, do you, look, do you see this as a sustainable situation going forward into the future? Um, I'd be interested in your thoughts. Give me your thoughts and in your comments um, because I don't see this being sustainable. And in the last 30 years that I've been involved extensively in dealing with the WSIB at every level, I haven't really seen anything that's been to the advantage and to improve support for injured workers. I haven't seen that. 
and something's going to have to give here, uh, especially when the WSIB is so flagrantly doing uh, what they're doing with employers and just neglecting injured workers. They may have a different opinion than mine, but bullshit's bullshit. And at the end of the day, um, if your needs aren't, needs aren't being met, they're not being met. That's just the bottom line. Uh, is it sustainable for the next generation, for our kids and grandkids? Um, so I'd like to leave you with that thought. I'm very interested in your feedback. There's a much bigger picture here. Um, and your input is important. So uh, I always finish this way. Please don't forget to subscribe. It, it's free. Um, it'll help me to continue to build this channel and put out these videos. I've got tons of information, experiences that I can impart to help you uh, with your challenges with WSIB or to avoid some of the pitfalls. Um, and I want to do that. And, uh, you know, please share it with others that uh, you think could benefit from this content. Um, there's a lot of people out there struggling with their WSIB situation and we don't know about them, but they're out there. Um, you know, over the years I've had to go or I've gone through all over the province. My company uh, represented over 10,000 uh, injured workers from Thunder Bay to Ottawa, Windsor, Fort Erie and everywhere in between. And I've traveled to all those cities and I did seminars and I met with people. And um, there's a lot of people out there hurting that need help. Um, and uh, sharing this with them. We can reach them and help them. Uh, also, if you have a story that you would like to share um, that can be inspiring for others, I'd love to interview you and promote and put, the, put it on our YouTube channel so others can see people who maybe don't have a good support system, live alone in a remote area, and they've lost hope and they need some inspiration. Um, that can go a long way. Um, Thumbs up if you like the content, please. That also goes a long way. And, and comments, please comment. You know, Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you'd like me to cover. Um, and I will endeavor to do the best I can to bring you the content that you're looking for. If you need help with your claim um, and, uh, and an easy to, to do process, uh, by all means, check out my company, wsibsettlements.com. Uh, see if it's something that it's for you. It's, a, it's affordable for everybody. It has all kinds of really good tools that I personally developed to help people succeed with their claims and the support system to do that. Um, so it may be for you or not, but uh, it's up to you. Um, I don't want to push you to do anything uh, that you're not comfortable with. Um, and then again, I also promote my, short, my uh, upcoming uh, topics through my shorts. Uh, not my shorts, literally, but it's a it's a vid, it's a YouTube uh, system where you where you put uh, a sixty second or less video, um, and you can promote all kinds of things. I talk about my upcoming material on that next one. Uh, so that's it uh, for this one, uh, folks. Um, I hope that I've left you with something that uh, is tangible that can help you. Uh, if you have questions, by all means, get in touch. And uh, as always, thank you and have an awesome. Sunday. Take care, friends.